This job description is trash. There are some red flags in here that immediately inform you that this company is very low on the machine learning maturity scale. They are disconnected. The person hiring and the, the group that's doing the sourcing for this role and the data science team are disconnected from each other. They're not talking. Otherwise, there would have been some very glaring problems with this job description that would have been caught in review and never released. So you are, as a candidate, especially as somebody who's at a senior level, you can fall into the trap of thinking, okay, I'm at a senior level, therefore I need to know everything. And so this is an opportunity for me to showcase all my capabilities. And I want to explain while going through this job description, just not only the red flags, but what your life would be like if you actually took this job. Because yes, there's a ton of us that are qualified for this job. But most of us have picked up these capabilities piecemeal. We've picked it up in one role or a next role. And as we've moved forward in a mature data science and machine learning team, you would never be expected to do all of this. And so let's dive in and let me talk about why this is just a huge bag of red flags. And if you are building job descriptions, pay close attention to what happens here because this is one of the biggest reasons why jobs just sit there and never get filled. It's because they don't make sense. This one does not make sense. And you're almost clued in from line one. It's line one, research, design, implement, evaluate, and optimize novel algorithms and models in deep learning NLP space to define the future of the NLP platform. That right there, that one job, that one line is the entire job. That is an applied researcher role. That is an entire eight hour a day role. That's a full-time role. That right there. And defining out all of the pieces that you need to know to support that one requirement, that's your whole job. That's an applied researcher. That is all you would do in your role. But there's more. And this is, like I said, huge red flag because you are set up to fail from the beginning, own end-to-end -end development and deployment of scalable and versatile ML AI based platform. Here is an immediate tip off that that first line they're not serious about. They, they don't actually have you doing applied research. Well, how do I know that with just two lines? Because if you do applied research, if you're at the stage of maturity, well, you can actually as a company or as a team, do applied research, you are already, you've already built that platform. You're already there. You are not going to have someone, especially not one of your applied researchers, who is the most valuable person on your team from a just contribution to the business because researchers create competitive advantages. Researchers create those novel features that other competitors can't, they can't duplicate very easily. So that's your highest end role right there. You would not take someone off of generating that much value and put them on platform development. That doesn't make any sense from a value stream or a value creation perspective. But also you can't do research. If you've ever done applied research without an end-to-end -end ML platform, you understand how hard and how time consuming and how limited your capabilities really are when it comes to just even the experiment itself, forget all the other stuff you have to do, but just the experimental piece. If you don't have a platform, it slows you down considerably. Things that should take a couple of days end up taking a couple of weeks. And so if they're saying you're going to own the end-to-end -end development and deployment of scalable, versatile MLAI platform, if they don't have a platform, they're not doing research. You won't be doing research. They may tell you, hey, you may be expected to produce research, but you know, as a researcher, that platform already has to be in place. It's not something that you're going to build on the fly. You're not, you know, sewing your parachute on the way out of the plane. So that's the big red flag right there, is there aren't the supporting pieces to implement or do AI-based research. Now, you've already been given two roles in those first two lines, and they're going to throw a third one at you develop technology strategy and solution stack to enable end-to-end -end scalable efficient automated processes for large-scale data analysis model development model validation and model implementation so you are an applied researcher you are an ml engineer managing that platform 
And now you are doing not only more ML engineering, you are also doing ML ops. And at the front end, you're doing data engineering. And you are basically, you are building the stack. So if the stack's not built, if there is no stack in place, how are you supposed to do research? How are you supposed to build out a platform? So you have to architect a stack first before you can do any of this. Do you think they actually understand that? Do you think senior leadership understands you may spend six months before you are able to produce anything because you have to architect from zero, from cold iron, everything that you need in order to do your job. That doesn't make any sense. It's, it's ridiculous on its face. And then to ask one person to be able to do all of this, it, it's obviously a very immature team with a leadership structure that doesn't understand how you do your job or what needs to be put in place. You're set up to fail and it keeps getting worse. Now you need to partner with product management, business leaders, and various functional groups to identify, guide, advise AI-based application opportunities. So somehow in your spare time, when you're not building out, when you're not doing the architecture, building the platform, doing all of the research necessary to create novel models, then implementing and supporting, when you're not doing all of that, you also need to be doing the strategy and product management support side. You need to be working with stakeholders. You need to be gathering requirements. You need to, are you really? That, does that make sense? Does that make any kind of sense to you? Think about what your day would look like. And there's another one. Keep in tune with industry trends, techniques, tools, so you can steer internal improvement and innovation of machine learning and data science. What? And? Really? And, and then finally, provide technical and team leadership. Now you are a leader. You are a technical mentor. You are a technical lead. You are a manager. Does that, I mean, what would your day look like? And I, I go back to this point. How would you segment your day so that you could achieve all of your major responsibilities? Each one of these responsibilities is an eight hour a day job. So how would you structure your day in order to be successful and to meet the needs that are expected from one person? And you can see that there are some obvious issues with that top part, and they continue in the qualifications section. The first three qualifications make sense for an applied research. Actually, you go to the first four because obviously you need to be proficient with Python to do the research role. But then this is where it stops making sense. And it's a clear indicator that whoever is in charge of the data science team or whoever is building out and actually responsible for the technical piece of data science in this organization didn't read this. They have no idea that this is the job description that's out there that's expected to get candidates that's resulting in the resumes that they're getting. They don't know. They didn't get involved in writing this. And I can tell you immediately why, because it says the first part makes sense. Py, you know, PyTorch, TensorFlow, Keras. Yeah, makes sense. But when it says good knowledge of R, you would not have Python and R. You might in some legacy shops that are doing a consolidation, but you would have picked a direction. You would have said, okay, we are either going Python or R, not both. And so in an immature shop, you could still have both coexisting in a shop in transition where there's an improvement and consolidation efforts so that we're using the same tools and we're all on the same page and hiring gets a whole lot easier when you have a unified toolkit, you would not have both because they are in many ways redundant. So you wouldn't have both. C slash or C sharp slash C plus plus. You see, I, I even auto corrected it myself. C sharp slash, that, that's one of those obvious mistakes that as a data scientist, you wouldn't make, you would put C dash C plus plus. That's what they meant to put in there. C sharp and C plus plus are not the same thing. Dot net and C, I mean, come on. This is something that anyone who has this level of proficiency would never put in a job description. Those don't make sense with a slash separating them. This was not written by a data scientist or someone technically proficient in any way. 
and now you have C sharp Java sitting next to each other. Again, those are redundant. You would pick one or the other. You would not implement both. That doesn't make any sense. JavaScript next to Java. Again, this is number one, the list is ridiculous. But number two, the way that it's written explains to you first and foremost, the person who wrote this is not technical. And number two, the fact that these technologies are redundant, the fact that a lot of these programming languages are redundant, that tells me immediately that this team is not mature enough. Again, it's another indicator that I'm dealing with a team that isn't mature enough for this person to be successful in it. Th this person is going to walk into burnout and a setup to fail. There's no way they can actually deliver what they're asked to in, in any sort of feasible time frame, any sort of time frame that senior leadership expects. Th there's just too much front work that you would end up having to do. And you can tell the ground has not been laid for any of that to be done, even if you wanted to be superhuman. And now you're seeing experience in leading data science and development team. No, they're not kidding. They are looking for someone who's also going to be a leader and technical leader. And here's the next, you know, I'm going to go over out of the box thinking, cutting edge research, uh, back to the researcher role. But when you get into Elasticsearch, Docker's, Kubernetes, Databricks, that stuff implies that you are now doing ops and engineering as well. There's no platform in place to handle your research scaling or any of the experiments that you're going to have to run at the scale that you're going to have to run them in order to do cutting edge natural language work. If that framework's not there, or if you're expected to know Kubernetes well enough to manage or create in many cases, that framework for managing distributed resources and scaling, if that platform's not already there, you can't do that research. You just can't. You can't manage the data sets, the complexity of running training and the experimental process. You can't, without a platform, you can't. It's going to take a long time for you to build the platform while you're doing research. And you know that just at a very basic level, that doesn't make any sense. And then it, you know, and it keeps going. You're going to big data architecture, pipeline creation, Hadoop, I mean, streaming, batch. This is, this is too much for one person to do. So I want to go back to my two main points. If you are a data scientist looking for your next role, that big step forward, that big promotion, this is not it. This role will burn you out. You'll be working with a cowboy, cowgirl team of people who don't understand how to do all the things they claim they're doing, which is a terrible role to step into. Whoever wrote this job description is not connected with the team you'll actually be working with or the management structure is so non-technical, so naive when it comes to data science and machine learning. Or they don't understand how to write a job description or they just don't proofread, who knows. But this is an indicator of someone who doesn't understand data science writing this job description. This is also indicative of someone who doesn't understand how much work is involved in research and producing actual, you know, the novel models that they're asking you to create. They don't understand what it takes to do that. So they've never done it before. What you're being evaluated on, it won't make any sense. If you've got experience in the research world, it will not make any sense because all of the framework and pieces that you need in order to be successful in your job, they aren't there. So if you read one of these, you have to look for each and every one of those red flags because that's a setup for failure. And more likely than not, the person evaluating you, the group that's interviewing you will not have the tools to really understand if you're capable of doing the job. You may not even be speaking in the same terms that they're used to hearing. You could be wasting your time in four and five rounds of interviews with a team that doesn't end up hiring qualified candidates because they don't even know what they're looking for. And so this is just top to bottom filled with red flags. And it's the type of job that you want to avoid. Now, if you are writing data science job descriptions, you have to at some point ask yourself, how would they split their time up? And is that in line? with the type of delivery cadence that our team expects. You can definitely have non-data scientists hiring and trying to build out that very beginning data science team, 
but they have to at least have a baseline understanding of how to create job descriptions to be successful in attracting talent. This is the kind of job description that just sits there for sometimes six months or longer because the majority of people who are qualified for this will not apply for something that's this just on its face ridiculous. And the people who do end up applying, those few that do apply, who look at this as a challenge, who want to take it on, the people who are evaluating them and deciding whether or not they should be hired are probably not qualified to make a determination, to ask the right questions, and to evaluate capabilities properly in order to even hire someone who could take on all of these responsibilities. And then finally, when you put this type of job description out there, the, it's almost immediately a setup for failure because you have set the expectations internally that one person is going to manage a project end to end and the core pieces of what are necessary in order to do the thing that creates value for the business just aren't there. So this high-end individual that you're paying quite a bit of money for is going to spend maybe six months to a year just building the groundwork and the frameworks and identifying projects and doing all the things necessary in order to get started on their very first project, they'll spend six to 12 months just getting to that point where they're ready to start, where everything's in place. By that time, there's expect expectations for a delivery. More likely than not, senior leadership is expecting something to hit the ground and produce revenue in under a year. And if it takes that long just to build the pipelines build the platform, create all of the support to do data science. And that takes six months to a year and the expectations are delivery is coming sooner. You're going to have senior leadership immediately questioning what's going on. And this person is not set up to succeed and projects will not make it. They'll be pressured to put something in production before they are ready to before there is everything necessary in order to set the project up for success and to achieve the business goals. So they'll be rushed to put something into production. They will, it won't be very good. And so in either case, this is a setup to fail. And you have to understand that. When you are hiring, this is a team in a single job description. And this type of job description needs to be broken up appropriately so that you have any sort of expectation of success and you want to hire in layers. You don't just hire the one size fits all person. If you need infrastructure put in place, hire those people that are going to build infrastructure first. And then once the groundwork is laid, then you bring in high end talent. Then you bring in the people that are going to do all of the ambitious components of data science that you're really after doing. So don't do this. Don't just don't do it.